Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla's ludicrous Model Y, the truth about EV demand slowing down, new end of quarter incentives and more, so let's get into it. And a special thanks to Recurrent for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, we've heard a lot lately from various news sources about how EV demand is slowing down, but that analysis isn't really a good way to look at the situation. EV sales have been holding steady over the last few years, but many brands aren't experiencing the same levels of growth that they had been experiencing in years past. As EVs become an even greater part of the automotive landscape, they have less and less market share that they can realistically take over, at least in a short period of time. Researcher Sam Caress posted a lengthy thread on X detailing the ways that framing the current situation as a sales slowdown is a flawed way of looking at things. To start off with, it is true that EV sales growth has been decelerating in recent years. In 2021, the best year for EV sales growth, EV adoption increased by 113% over the previous year. Then 2022 saw growth of only 59%, and then 2023 saw the lowest growth rate since 2019 at just 28%. While those numbers paint one picture of what is going on with EV sales, it doesn't really paint the whole picture. A key piece of information worth looking at here is sales market share. Gasoline and diesel powered vehicles sales peaked in 2017 and has been shrinking at an increasing rate ever since. While hybrid and PHEV sales have grown to take some of that new market share, purely electric vehicles have grown at the fastest rate. What was a minuscule portion of vehicle sales in 2017 now makes up a huge portion of all new vehicle sales and is projected to increase even further. By 2026, EVs are expected to make up nearly a quarter of all new vehicle sales. This decreasing annual growth is merely the result of simple math, as we can see here in this S-curve graph. Starting at the beginning of a product's launch onto the market, even the smallest increases in sales are going to represent huge percentage increases year over year. If you sell 10 units of a product in year one, and then an additional 10 units the next year, you will have seen a 100% growth rate. As you increase your growth rate, eventually you are going to reach a limit as to how much you can realistically make or sell in a given year. As we can see on the graph, the more that your market share increases, the lower your growth percentage appears, even if sales are increasing steadily. Tesla sales have been growing every year since they started selling cars, but even they recognize that exponential growth is not possible or sustainable forever. They still have plenty of room to grow, and EVs have a long way to go before they become the dominant form of personal transportation. Decreases in annual growth percentage are to be expected, but that isn't the only way to look at the reality of EV sales. While it may seem concerning to see the decreasing growth rate of EV sales, it's very important to look at how EV sales are a growing part of the automotive sales landscape. Despite what some may say, EVs aren't going anywhere, and we are likely heading into a future very soon where electric cars reign supreme. Next up today, we have a number of updates for what should prove to be the most important products for Tesla this year and next. In the long view, the Cybertruck is important, but the real important car for Tesla and their growth as a company is the next-gen EV. That is the car that should truly reach the mass market, and there are many companies talking about directly competing with this car in the US before it has even been seen. That will be great when we get there, but for now, Tesla makes five vehicles, the Model 3, Model Y, Model S, Model X, and Cybertruck. While the Model S and X are still very much available and have seen some improvements improvements, it's still pretty clear that Model 3 and Y is the backbone of Tesla. That's why they just introduced the re-engineered Model 3. This car takes a lot from the Model S and X and improves a ton of important things in this car. I've been driving this car for over a month now and the biggest upgrades I've noticed come with cabin isolation, reduced road noise, and a much smoother ride. What has been missing for that car though is the performance model. We've seen rumors of this car, but this week even more got leaked confirming a lot of great things. First, while we've already gotten a good look at the exterior of this new car in the wild, Tesla is still driving test models with camouflage wraps and covers. This one was spotted out for a test drive in Florida, completely covered in this geometric camouflage wrap. Another was spotted a few days later with a black cover concealing the new front bumper design. The new Model 3 Performance features a new front splitter design, a rear spoiler, and an updated wheel design with red brake calipers. Also in Florida, another ludicrous Model 3 was spotted parked near Kennedy Space Center. This time, however, it was completely uncovered and out for anyone to see. The increasing frequency with which we are seeing this new performance model would seem to indicate that we are going to see a proper reveal very soon. Dominic on X says that the media is starting to receive invitations to test the upcoming Performance Model 3, and if true, that would really lead us to believe this car will be releasing soon. Tesla usually gives media access pretty close to the launch of a vehicle. A photo of another one this week with its ludicrous badge covered up with painter's tape leaked as well. Not much to glean here, but they are producing more and more of them. 
At the same time, photos and videos of the interior of a Ludicrous Model 3 were shared online. We can clearly see on screen that this is a Ludicrous model, and Tesla is simply indicating it with the badge on screen under the software tab. One interesting thing to note from this menu is that pedals and steering has been replaced with Dynamics, just like the Cybertruck. Also, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth options now have their own tab in the main menu on screen. A longer video scrolling through this menu was briefly posted online as well, but later removed, but it also confirmed a few things. For one, in the Dynamics menu, you will have the choice between Chill, Sport, and Insane Acceleration. I wonder why this isn't ludicrous, and maybe that will change in time. In a Plaid Model S or X, that top acceleration mode is Plaid. Then Ride and Handling has options between Standard and Sport. Then of course there's Track Mode. As far as I can tell, this is the first time Tesla is adding ride and handling options to the Model 3 like this, and it will be very interesting to see what this means in practice. Some have said that this alone truly confirms an active suspension, which would be a pretty big upgrade for the Model 3, and now it looks to be confirmed in an options list for this car. Within this list, we can see a premium immersive sound option, the fact that it uses a Panasonic battery pack, the performance chassis, and active suspension. That's a pretty big confirmation there of a feature that many didn't even expect Tesla to ship on this car. We can also see red brake calipers, 20-inch wheels, ventilated seats, and that rear 4D2 motor confirmed. That motor should boost overall horsepower to over 600. In the past, the upgrade to a Performance Model 3 was notable, but this time, Tesla is making it truly worth the extra cost. It will be a completely different vehicle, while still looking fairly similar. We'll see a slightly altered front and rear, new brakes, an active suspension, a spoiler, the ludicrous badge, improved performance, and then inside, ventilated bucket seats, which should match the leaked future plaid ones, carbon fiber trim along the dash, and more. Next up, let's talk about today's sponsor, Recurrent. Recurrent is a free platform designed by battery scientists to analyze your EV's range and battery. EV drivers can connect to their car for daily owner insights, and they currently have around 20,000 active vehicles for 50 plus makes and models in all 50 states. Here's a sample report for a 2023 Tesla Model Y, which details this car's expected range, real world range, range in three years, how much time is left on the warranty, and more. When it's time to sell or trade in, EV sellers can now use their recurrent info to sell their car for more by showing their range and battery are strong. Recurrent's network of dealerships pays a premium for these cars, and I had success using this early on when selling my 2018 Model 3. The buyer beat all online offers and came to my house to pick up the Model 3. With their service, the EV owner makes more money, and for large auto auctions, they've found that including recurrent battery insights increased the average sale price by $1,400 and helped cars sell faster. If you're looking to buy your first EV, shoppers can check the range, battery, and tax credit eligibility on tens of thousands of used EVs for free with recurrent reports. It's free for consumers, no data is ever shared without consent, and battery data is handled securely with end-to-end -end encryption. With recurrent, we can buy, drive, and sell electric cars positively. So check them out by clicking the link in the description below. One very interesting feature in development as well is something that should come to all Teslas without stocks, auto shift between drive and reverse. Right now, auto shift out of park is all that's available, but ultimately, Tesla doesn't want you to need to shift on screen. Here in the menu, it says automatically shift between forward and reverse. Likely, it would figure out situations where you need to shift, like during a three-point turn, and automatically do it for you when you tap the brake. It sounds a bit scary at first glance, and in the menu says it's dev only, but I am excited to see what this could become. The code name that Tesla is using internally for the software in this car is Poppy Seed, and it was built in Fremont. All signs are pointing to this car being released by Tesla quite soon, and given how many of these leaks are coming from the US with US built cars, I think it could be safe to assume that they plan to release this simultaneously in all markets. Out of the two factories that currently build this car, Fremont and Shanghai. With that said, we do have some news there this week that is pretty interesting. The long-term plan for Giga Texas is for that factory to build the Model Y, Model 3, Cybertruck, and next-gen EV. Ultimately, it will be Tesla's main factory, greatly increasing the output they currently do at their California Fremont factory. To start, Tesla went all in, focused on the Model Y there, but now that the Cybertruck is being added into the mix successfully, they may be finding success with ramping other vehicles there and ready to add the Model 3. Giga Texas is a Tesla-built facility from the ground up, so it makes sense it can be far more optimized for how they make cars today. Rumors have even said that Tesla wanted to do a large gigacast for the Model 3 refresh, like they do with the Model Y, but retooling Fremont would have taken too long and been too expensive. That's where Giga Texas comes in, and Joe Tegmeyer, who always flies drones over Giga Texas, spotted five Model 3s in the outbound lot at Giga Texas this week. These are very clearly Model 3s, and we can see it with the different wheels, smaller size of the car, two-piece glass roof, headlights, and taillights. 
seeing them sitting next to Cybertrucks is a brand new sight at a Tesla factory, and we even see them in multiple colors, four in white and one in black. At this point, it's only speculation, but a number of things are possible here. These appear to have been built at Giga Texas, so I'd imagine this indicates one of three things. One, Tesla is planning to move Model 3 production to Giga Texas and is getting started. Two, Tesla is planning to add Model 3 production capacity to Giga Texas. And three, that new ludicrous Model 3 we've been talking about, since it has so many changes, may come out of Giga Texas instead of Fremont. Now, to that point, I don't see a ludicrous badge on the back of these Model 3s. And then from the front, I don't think these have that updated front splitter. If we zoom in and compare to the new Model 3's normal bumper, I think that matches as opposed to the ludicrous bumper. So the most likely story here is that Tesla is starting to build the Model 3 out of Giga Texas, and it is likely bringing manufacturing improvements, like large castings, that they have brought to Model Y production. For now, it will add into production, but long term, I'd imagine it will be advantageous for them to suspend Fremont production in favor of Giga Texas. They just have more room to improve things there, and I'd imagine cost can come down as a result. That's still a ways off, but it's exciting to see this out of Giga Texas nonetheless. In any case, all of this has to do with the Model 3, and it's exciting, but Tesla's most popular car is the Model Y. The codenamed Juniper Refresh of this car has been rumored for some time, but Tesla has been clear that at least in the US, it's not coming this year. Still, what many aren't fully considering is that in addition to a refreshed Model Y, there will surely be a ludicrous Model Y with everything mentioned above for the Model 3. That means that probably sometime in 2025, Tesla is going to ship a Model Y with performance quicker than a 3.5 second zero to 60, an adaptive suspension to allow you to choose between standard and sport, an altered front splitter, carbon fiber trim in the interior, ventilated sport seats, and everything else we're seeing here. For many, the Performance Model 3 makes the most sense, but the Model Y is a more practical car for many. The ludicrous model there could prove extremely popular and the car that many want to have. Instead of some simple upgrades over the long range, it will truly differentiate itself. While Cybertruck and the next-gen Tesla dominate the news in Tesla's future, there's still a lot coming in the meantime for their main two cars that we're starting to see everywhere. I'm excited first to see the ludicrous Model 3, but potentially a bit more excited to see the ludicrous Model Y. Next up today, I recently spoke on this channel about a highly anticipated update to a feature that has been around on older Tesla vehicles for a while now. That is Auto Park, and a new version is starting to be showed off in videos. Hopefully this is what finally brings this feature to non-USS cars and improves on it. In this vehicle, we see the driver moving slowly through the parking lot, with the car highlighting all of the nearby available parking spots on screen, placing a P marker over the spot that is most recommended. As you drive forward, the car detects new available spots and adjusts its recommendations accordingly. The driver pulls forward through the parking lot, and once he finds a spot he wants, he taps to select it on screen. Once the car has been brought to a complete stop, you can select the start option on screen. From there, the car starts to back up into the spot, making quick steering adjustments as it moves. From hitting start until the car stops moving, the whole parking process takes approximately 30 seconds. Another driver filmed the same basic maneuver on his Model Y, and it also took about 30 seconds to park. While we absolutely would like to see these parking times improved, the overall user experience is leagues better than in past versions. Being able to select pretty much any available parking space is a great improvement for this software that makes it a lot better to use. As it stands right now, this feature is really impressive, but of course will only be available to customers with enhanced autopilot or FSD. This feature is coming alongside FSD version 12, or more specifically 12.3.1, which Tesla seems pretty confident in. In fact, Elon Musk just sent an email to Tesla employees saying, going forward, it is mandatory in North America to install and activate FSD version 12.3.1 and take customers on a short test ride before handing over the car. Almost no one actually realizes how well supervised FSD actually works. I know this will slow down the delivery process, but it is nonetheless a hard requirement. Furthermore, he said, and please do the same when cars are returned from service. This is very important. Clearly, Elon is trying to drive sales of FSD as the quarter approaches the end, but it also shows confidence in this new version. Tesla has moved to a very hands-off delivery experience at many delivery centers where you don't need to talk with anybody, so this move will be quite different there. For myself, I wouldn't be the biggest fan of needing an FSD demo when I'm just trying to pick up my car that I had to bring in for service. In any case, we'll see how things progress here, but it seems that something is actually happening on the FSD front, which is good to see. Last up today, as we approach the end of the quarter, it becomes increasingly important for Tesla to deliver as many cars as possible for the quarterly reports. In the past, Tesla would normally do a temporary price cut near the end of quarter to drive sales, but in recent months, we've been seeing them employ a bit of a different strategy. 
In the last few weeks, Tesla has added a notice that all Model Y trims will have their prices increased by $1,000 at the beginning of April. With this method, rather than driving sales with temporary price cuts, Tesla is encouraging you to buy now before the price goes up later. The effect here should be pretty similar, but this way Tesla can move product without having to lower prices on the MSRP. We're just now learning that come April, Tesla will also be raising the price of the Model Y in China. There, the price will have a smaller adjustment, equating to a price that's approximately $700. Since all three trims will be going up in the US, then we can assume it will be the same in China. This comes at the same time as Tesla cutting back on production out of their Shanghai plant. Bloomberg reports that the automaker has, quote, instructed employees to lower production of both the Model Y and Model 3 by working five days a week instead of the usual six and a half days. This is an interesting move and it's prompted a lot of speculation as to why they may be doing this. Some believe this may be a sign that demand for Tesla's vehicles is waning in the Chinese market. Dozens of local automakers have been producing affordable EV options that could put a now more expensive Model Y at a competitive disadvantage. However, this slowdown in production could also be the earliest signs of the upcoming refreshed Model Y. It would still be a ways away, but decreased production would allow Tesla more time to begin updating their assembly lines for these new vehicles. This slowdown isn't 100% confirmed yet, but if the Tesla insider who released this information is correct, then we'll have to see how this fits into the company's upcoming plans. Beyond the price adjustments, Tesla has also been offering a lot of temporary incentives to drive end of quarter sales. Previously, if you used an existing Tesla driver's referral code, then you would be eligible for three months of free full self-driving. With this recent update, using a referral code when you purchase a new vehicle gets you 12 months of free premium connectivity. Premium connectivity isn't the most expensive feature, costing only $10 a month or $100 for the year, but a free $100 value is still always welcome if all you have to do is use someone's link. Mine is linked below, but anyone's gets the same deal. This comes in addition to the other existing incentives, such as a one-time transfer of unlimited supercharging for eligible customers, an FSD transfer, and up to 10,000 free supercharger miles. There's a lot going on here, and it could be a great time to buy a Tesla if you like the features it delivers today. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest hacked Tesla and why that's a good thing, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.